elastic vibrations. So vibrations are an example of cyclic motion or periodic motion. So uh, vibrations, say, of a mass on a rubber band that's vibrating up and down, uh, these are a uh, similar type of motion, uh, cyclic motion, like the uh, oscillating motion of a pendulum swinging back and forth or uh, rotational motion. Now, the vibrations of uh, elastic objects are uh, simple, and the reason is that elastic objects obey this property known as Hooke's Law. So uh, Hooke's Law says that if we have a material that's elastic and we exert a force on it, say to compress it, then if we double the amount of force, we get double the amount of compression. Or if instead of compressing it, we're stretching it, if we stretch it twice as hard, it st stretches by uh, twice the distance. Uh, so uh, if we think of, a, a, say, an elastic uh, rubber band, uh, things like uh, steel are also elastic, but uh, they're so stiff, sometimes the um, distance that's moved is, is rather small, and so it's hard to see. Uh, but for a rubber band, it's easy to, to visualize uh, the frequency of uh, vibrations in a situation like this uh, depends on two things, the stiffness of the material. So the um, stiffer the rubber band, the faster it's going to vibrate. So, And then it also depends on how much mass is being moved. So if the rubber band is exerting a certain amount of force, according to Hooke's law, uh, the more mass that it has to move the smaller the acceleration, and so the uh, frequency of the uh, of these vibrations will be uh, less if there's more mass. So, in general, elastic vibrations, the frequency depends on the stiffness and on the amount of mass that's being moved. Now, one thing that the frequency does not depend on is the amplitude. So, whether this mass is moving only a small distance or a larger distance, uh, the frequency of those uh, vibrations is the same. Let's uh, look at that in this example where actually I have a, an elastic spring and there's a mass hanging from it. And we'll start by doing a small amplitude oscillations and I'll make a noise to help you keep track of the um, of the, sorry, of the vibrations. So here we go. Beep, 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 Okay, now let's compare that with uh, large amplitude oscillations. And again, I'll make that beeping noise. Beep. So hopefully you heard that whether the uh, amplitude of the oscillations was small or large, in the two cases the um, frequency of that of the beeping, which was uh, the frequency of the vibrating uh, motion, was basically the same in the two cases. So uh, that's one nice thing about elastic vibrations, uh, the frequency doesn't change with the amplitude. Uh, now we notice something uh, along those lines with the vibration of the water balloon as it's uh, in the last part of the motion uh, in, during the settle. Uh, so let's look at some video of that. So here watch, especially on the last part where the balloon is just jiggling on the ground and the vibrations keep a regular frequency even as the amplitude of the motion uh, settles down. 
So just as I said here, the vibration frequency is more or less constant as the amplitude of the vibrations is dying out. Now, the spacings for elastic vibrations uh, also have a regular pattern. Uh, here, we're looking at frame by frame from uh, one of these uh, vibrations starting from the top position, uh, passing through the middle, and then for this lowest position, and then the pattern repeats itself as the mass moves back up to the top, and then it will move back down to the bottom. This um, motion is actually closely connected to uniform circular motion. So imagine for a moment that uh, we have something that's moving around in a circle with uh, uniform circular motion. So this is the position on, on each frame. Well, if we uh, look at just the vertical spacings, then it turns out that those vertical spacings are the same spacings as we have with vibrations. So uh, we see that's slowing out from the top and passing through the middle and then slowing in to the bottom and then slowing out from the bottom and, and so forth. Uh, the frequency of rotation would be the number of um, revolutions per minute, say and that corresponds to the number of uh, vibrations per minute. So when we go around the circle once, we uh, complete one full cycle of the vibrations. You should also notice that uh, there's a certain texture in the timing here. Uh, the, uh, we have slowing out from the top through the middle. The spacings are more or less uh, uniform. So we have a small acceleration through the middle and then a large acceleration again as we slow into the bottom position and then slow out of the bottom position. Uh, we also expect this from uh, Hooke's law because we know that Hooke's law, the force exerted is large when we have a large uh, compression or a large extension of the spring. But through this, this middle position um, with Hooke's law, the, the force uh, actually passes through zero. Now, if we look at the motion curves for uh, vibrating motion, so this would be the position on each uh, frame, and compare those with falling motion, uh, going from the uh, top to the middle uh, position, as we see here, uh, the motion curve for vibration is rather similar to the parabolic arc that we have for falling motion. Uh, the main difference is that the uh, motion curve is uh, somewhat straighter on uh, this part where it's approaching uh, the middle part of the motion uh, because the acceleration is less, so we have less less curvature in that. But otherwise, they uh, the two curves resemble the, each other. Uh, for the vibrating motion, the mathematical description of the curve is actually a cosine uh, wave. Now, it, of course, it's much more different uh, between the two curves after we pass through the middle position. Uh, the falling motion is a complete uh, parabolic uh, arc, but the vibration uh, after it passes through the middle position has to s uh, slow down as it's uh, slowing into the lowest position and then from the lowest position, it's going to start rising back up. So uh, this uh, second half is an inverted duplicate of the uh, first half. Now, finally, um, there are uh, surface waves, as you, I'm sure you've noticed uh, in looking at some of these videos. And of course, these are connected to uh, vibrations, the, the, the waves are related to the vibrational motion, uh, but it's a more complicated topic that uh, deserves a couple of uh, uh, tutorials just by itself. So um, that's a topic that we'll get into when we have the tutorials on effects animation. So in uh, summary, 
Um, vibrational motion is another example of a cyclic or periodic motion. Uh, elastic materials vibrate with a frequency that depends on the stiffness of the material and, and the amount of mass that's being uh, moved in the uh, vibrations. The frequency of elastic vibrations does not depend on the amplitude of the motion. The spacings for elastic vibrations are closely related to those of uniform uh, circular motion as we we saw in that example. And finally, as with a swinging motion, the texture and the timing is most noticeable uh, near the extremes. So in that vibration near the top and the bottom, we have uh, the most uh, acceleration, we have the most curvature in uh, the motion curve uh, through the middle. The, uh, the curve is rather straight, the speed is essentially constant. So uh, that's the basics of uh, vibration. So hopefully that helps you animate these in a uh, believable fashion.